baptized by blazing fire. This is the incredible story of a small Korean church that experienced an amazing revival. With their spiritual eyes open, they encountered intense spiritual warfare, transforming encounters with Jesus Christ, and many visits to both heaven and hell. Every demonic trick in the book was used against them to stop their 30-day all-night prayer rally. There are five books in this series. This is an abridged version of book number one. from Jesus to Pastor Kim. From now on, whatever experiences you and your congregation members see, you must document precisely what you see and hear. Through this, I desire all the churches in Korea and all over the world to wake up. This is the reason you were brought into this world. At this time, the Korean churches and the congregation's interior and exterior faithful livelihood is in conflict with what I intended for them. The pastoral leaders and the church members worship me in formality and know me merely in a written theory. Pastor Kim Our congregation believes in the power of speaking in tongues. So we were able to pray longer, more earnestly, and much deeper. Praying in tongues also helped us concentrate and with it came incredible abilities that opened up our spiritual sight. The process of unlocking the spiritual sight of an individual is not only arduous, but one must overcome many obstacles. Therefore, if you are carelessly absent-minded and inadequately equipped, you will pay dearly. Now we too are thoroughly prepared to counterattack by carefully preparing ourselves with praise, filling our hearts with the words of Jesus, and seeking earnestly by crying out to the Lord. Satan's subordinates come singly. Then when one fails, two more approach. Then they attack in groups of 10, 30, 50, 100, and even greater numbers. The groups repeatedly scatter and reunite to attack according to the situation. Then, when one is chased away by a prayer, the evil spirit moves on to the next target with teasing, poking, tempting, and sometimes with whispers of sweet talk. Finally, when their identity is exposed, they quickly run away. Satan's subordinates appear before us in various appearances. Sometimes they would try to lure us by impersonating a famous entertainer or an innocent little child or a false Jesus or by masquerading as a beautiful angel of light. They even threw us into confusion when they appeared flawlessly disguised as my own daughter. We fought and won but also lost many battles against the evil spirits. With our losses came agonizing pain in our flesh. The pain was so intense we rolled and tumbled on the ground many times. When we were faced with frightfully unmanageable demons, our Lord mobilized the Archangel Michael and the heavenly angels to assist us. Our loving Lord assures us that we are not alone when we call on the heavenly angels to support us after we collapse from exhaustion following the battle. Jesus reminded us to equip ourselves with daily prayer. It is necessary to have regular prayer. Jesus described the importance of praying in agreement with two or more witnesses. Matthew 18, 19. The evil forces do not leave gently. Instead, they leave scars and the suffering continues. Our 2005 motto was, Be Revived Through Prayer and we began our prayer rally on January 2nd. It ran for 30 days, and there were 10 members in total. On the first day after Sunday evening service, we had a prayer service. On the second day, January 3rd, we experienced the fiery presence of the Holy Spirit. 
The unity prayers, as well as the individual prayers, exploded uncontrollably and continued until 7.30 a.m. the next morning. After prayer service ended, we gathered in a circle to hear the testimonies and exactly what it was like to meet Jesus. The duration of our prayer service became longer and longer. Wednesday evening service started at 7.30 p.m. and barely finished by 8 a.m. the next morning. Thursday, 9 p.m. to 10 a.m. God totally reversed our thinking. The more we prayed, the more the Lord impacted us with amazing things. Even though our service lasted through the night, no one complained. Instead, they longed for more spiritual food. The Lord came to visit us while we prayed. We saw Him through our spiritual eyes, but at times we saw Him clearly with our physical eyes. As the children experienced Jesus, they were freed from disobedience and transformed into submissive, faithful servants. Two of our members, after seeing heaven and hell, cried on their knees and asked forgiveness for the times they mistreated me. In sub-zero weather, they went out to share the gospel while they blew warm breath into the palms of their hands. They headed out at 4 p.m. and did not return until 8.30 p.m. with their hands and feet frozen cold. They knew they had to be diligent because they saw their treasure being stored up in heaven. Mina, the five-year-old girl, prayed in tongues with her arms held high for two to three hours. Our congregation received divine gifts of prophecy, spiritual distinction, speaking in tongues, knowledge, wisdom, and divine faith. There are no falsified contents in this book. Only the personal experiences of members involved with the prayer rally. Day number two, Pastor Kim's testimony. With the Holy Spirit's special intervention, it was as if we were on fire as we prayed. Even though it ended after 7 a.m. the next morning, we felt that we did not get enough. Yo Kyung Lee's testimony. I deeply yearned and with all my might called out to the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, I love you. Let me see you. Appear to me. I shouted and prayed diligently in tongues. About an hour had passed when suddenly a bright light shone and someone was standing inside the light. I opened my eyes and was filled with shock but did not see anything. When I closed my eyes again, I could see clearly, so I kept my eyes closed. Jesus stood before me wearing a bright glowing garment. Yo Kyung, I love you. Jesus said these words, then drew closer to me and sat in front of me. I don't think I ever saw anyone as beautiful as him. Jesus' hair was golden, and he had beautiful big eyes. Jesus gently stroked my hair and said, Yo Kyung, I love you. I began to cry, and my heart melted. I want to show you what heaven is like. Soon, we were on the way to heaven. There was a light shining so bright that I could not open my eyes. I thought, this must be heaven. When we arrived, countless angels with wings welcomed us, and Jesus took me around, introducing me to many angels. Later, Jesus asked me, Yo Kyung, are you happy to be visiting heaven? Yes, Jesus, very, very happy, Jesus said. Pray diligently, obey Pastor Kim, and attend church service as well. Then I will take you to visit heaven more often. So be zealous. After it was over, I shared my testimony of meeting Jesus and visiting heaven. Bong Nyo Beck's Testimony Each of us were kneeling down on a cushion to pray. Next to me was the pastor's wife, who was dancing, filled with the Holy Spirit. Her dance was smooth, like flowing water. She was glowing and dancing beautifully as the Holy Spirit led her. I continued praying in tongues. Suddenly, a glorious golden light shone, 
And there stood Jesus, dressed in a shining white garment. Bongyo, I love you. Words could not describe the overflowing joy of meeting the Lord. I had many questions for him, and he answered them promptly. Hak Sung Lee's Testimony I concentrated on praying in tongues. Without my knowledge, my prayer was filled with authority as my voice turned powerful. My body was burning up like a fire, and I had to take off my outer garments. Later, my shirt was drenched in sweat. I had never in my life experienced this blazing fire of the Holy Spirit coming over me. I was joyful and happy to pray. So I prayed on bended knee, and with painful paralysis, my legs went numb. The pastor's wife, Hyung Ja Kang's testimony. I hadn't prayed a decent prayer for a long time, so I was feeling the urge. While praying, if an unusual spiritual atmosphere arose, the Lord dealt with the pastor and each member individually with fiery authority. The spiritual dance that Mrs. Chu Thomas was anointed with, I yearned to receive. And later, for the first time, I was able to dance the holy dance without hesitation. For a while, I hid this gift, but I can no longer run away from the guiding forces of the Holy Spirit. My body was anointed with fire as my hands freely moved to the music. Day 4 Yo Kyung Lee's testimony. I was praying with all my might, and with a sudden burst of energy, I saw a devil that looked as though it came out of a movie or something. Wearing a white garment with long hair, it came towards me dancing and speaking in a dreary voice. <laughs> I was paralyzed with fear. You wicked and cursed devil, I command you in the name of Jesus to flee from me. But the devil approached closer to me, crying, <laughs> Why should I flee from you? Not only am I here to hinder you from praying, but I will give you physical ailment. Then Pastor Kim laid his hand on my head and prayed, shouting, You filthy devil, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to flee. The devil was gone. The pastor told us, we must be confident when we pray. I resumed praying, calling out, Jesus, help me, help me. I was calling out to him for quite some time when Jesus appeared in the bright light. He spoke to me, Yo Kyung, do not worry. I will protect you. No matter what kind of demon attacks you, do not be afraid and do not worry. With all your strength, call out to me and I will come and cast the demons away. So don't be afraid and be strong. Day number five. Author's note. The marriage between Sister Bong Nyo Beck and Jesus symbolizes the relationship between the Savior and the sinners he saved. He wanted to show this to the new convert, Sister Beck. Bong Nyo Beck's Testimony After the service, I started diligently praying in tongues when the Lord appeared to me and said, Bong Nyo, let's go to heaven. He held my hand and guided me. Soon I was standing at the foot of our Heavenly Father's holy throne. Jesus explained passionately the reason why I was brought to heaven. Bong Nyo, I wish to have a beautiful wedding in heaven with you today, and that's why you are here. Soon, the angels started preparing my gown and adorned me with many jewels. I had never seen anything like the golden gown prepared for me. I was filled with joy. Many angels and citizens of heaven congratulated our matrimony, and I shall never forget this scene. Right then, the holy throne of our Heavenly Father seemed to sway ever so slightly back and forth. Each time his holy throne moved, because God was so pleased, five brilliant colors radiated out. After the ceremony, I traveled holding the Lord's hand all over heaven. I was at the peak of my happiness. 
Hak Sung Lee's testimony. With a firm determination, I started praying in tongues, when suddenly the cross hanging behind the podium radiated with bright light, and a round door appeared. A little later, Jesus appeared. Hak Sung, I love you. I could not contain the happiness that overwhelmed me. Hak Sung, there is some place you have to go with me, so let's go. As soon as Jesus took my hand, my body floated in the air as light as a feather. When we arrived at our destination, there was a strange stench, and it was very dirty. I could hardly breathe due to the offensive smell all around me. Jesus, my beloved, Jesus, where are we? I can't see very well. I can't see in front of me, I shouted. But Jesus said, Haksam, do not be frightened. This is hell. I will protect you, so do not worry. But look closely. The fire heated the gates of hell bright red, and even before entering, it was unbearably hot. I had to turn away from the scorching fire and the intense heat. I asked Jesus, Jesus, how can we step into this pit of fire? I don't think I can do this. We went to a place that was pitch dark, and I could not see a thing. Then, as soon as Jesus touched my eyes, I could see very clearly. There was an old lady with a look of despair, sitting motionless and wearing a white traditional Korean dress. Jesus instructed, Hak Sung, look closer. So I walked closer to the old lady. Ah, it was my maternal grandmother who had passed away a few years earlier. When my mother left home, my maternal grandmother raised me. My grandmother loved us. It was not right that my grandmother was in hell. With astonishment, I, I shouted out to her, Grandma, it's me, Hak Sung. How can a gentle and kind person wind up here? Hurry, come out of there. My grandmother quickly recognized me, and surprised, she asked, Hak Sung, why are you here? How did you come here? I replied, Jesus brought me here. Grandmother, hurry, come out of there. My grandmother cried and shouted, Hak Sung, as much as I want to get out, you can't do what you want here. You must not end up here. You must not go here. Leave immediately. In tears, I pleaded with Jesus. Jesus, please help my grandmother come out. My grandmother lived a sad life. In an instant, a large snake appeared and started coiling and winding up her body. I screamed, ah! My grandmother fearfully shouted, Save me, please! But there was no use. Jesus, my beloved Jesus, I am the one who did so much evil. Please do something, please. Jesus did not say a word, but his heart was breaking as he watched. I cried and cried as I begged, but there was no use. Even in the midst of craziness, she asked about the welfare of the family and worried about them. Hak Sung, how are your sisters? What about your mother? I replied, everything is doing well. And as I was answering her, the snake wrapped around her tighter. My grandmother's agonizing screams grew louder and louder. Jesus took my hand and guided me, saying, Hak Sung, it is time to go now. I left the cries of my grandmother behind me and came out of hell. Jesus said, In hell, compared to the physical world, all your senses are more certainly and clearly alive. Hak Sung, don't cry. You saw it clearly, so go and serve the Lord faithfully. Do you understand? Later on, Jesus called to me. Hak Sung, hell was gruesome, right? I want to show you heaven today. In a short time, we were in heaven, and groups of angels and many people who had arrived in heaven before me came out to welcome me. The surrounding angels and Jesus joined hands to joyfully dance together. Everything about heaven was a complete contrast to the scenes of hell. In heaven, what I saw looked novel, amazing, and unbelievable. While in heaven, I made a request to Jesus. 
Jesus, uh, Pastor's son Joseph, he, his foot is covered with painful warts, and he can hardly walk. Please heal him. And my mom is suffering with back pain. Help her not to be in pain. Please help Brother Joseph All, who is living in the church office, to quickly find a job. And lastly, help us to have a revival at our church. Jesus happily replied, Yes, yes. All, right. all right. Jesus looked at me and said, Hack some. That's, enough, That's for enough for today. today. Let's, Let's go. go. When Jesus held my hand, we flew through the sky, arriving back at church. I resumed praying diligently. I could not stop thinking about my maternal grandmother who was suffering in hell, and I burst into tears. I was in so much distress and pain, I cried out kicking and screaming, Lord, what, a, what am I going to do? My grandmother died because of me. This pain in my heart is so bad. Grandmother, my poor grandmother. I cried until exhaustion. Then I started again. I called out to the Lord. I rarely cry, but I could not believe the tears that flowed for two, three, then four hours. The first prayer service finished, but still I could not contain my sorrow. I shared my testimony of visiting heaven and hell with the others, and then at 5 a.m. in the morning, we started our second prayer service, which ended five hours later. While pastor was giving his sermon, Jesus appeared. And then the pastor's sermon became more powerful. Angels came down from heaven, lining up beside the podium, and some carried a bowl with a support. They captured every one of our prayers, and they sang, Amen! Amen! Even after the service ended, I could not stop agonizing over my grandmother, who was in hell. Day number six, Bongnyo Beck's testimony. Four hours had passed since Pastor started his sermon. Not one of us even blinked our eyes. The five-year-old Mina was also listening intently to the sermon. As I fixed my eyes on the pastor, Jesus appeared with a bunch of angels. Jesus guided nine sheep with him. I realized the number of sheep Jesus brought and the number of those in the prayer rally were the same. You are all my sheep. I am always watching over you. So do not worry. Pastor Kim's sermon was burning up, and he spoke with holy fire. Jesus was deeply involved in the pastor's sermon and shouted with glee, Great job! Pastor Kim, you are doing great! Jesus walked alongside Pastor with a constant, beaming smile. When Pastor moved to his left, Jesus moved left. When he moved to the right, Jesus also moved right. Then ten angels appeared. One stood with an open book, recording something in a hurry. Other angels surrounded the pastor, carrying their bowls, collecting the sermon. When one bowl was full, the next angel came with another bowl, and this continued as they carried it up to heaven. Jesus rejoiced, and the angels also rejoiced. After the sermon, it was finally time to pray in unison. As we prayed, the nine members of the prayer team all looked like they were fighting a battle. And we cried out to the Lord with repentance. The tears and sweat came pouring forth. Then Jesus drew near, calling my name. The Lord spoke by comparing various churches. Bong Nyo. Many churches sleep and have their red crosses lit up during weeknights. But the members of the Lord's church pray so diligently I am so delightfully happy now. Then angels descended in groups of three. One, two, three, four, five. I counted for a while, but I could not see the end of their procession, so I stopped. They continued down endlessly and stood in front of the altar where the nine of us were praying. They collected our prayers in golden bowls and took them up to heaven and then returned. The angels take our prayers to God. But lately, with the members of the Lord's Church worshiping all night long and throwing ourselves into prayer, the angels thanked us for giving them so much work to do. Jesus said, With your diligent calling out to the Lord and worshiping day and night, the Heavenly Father, myself, and the Holy Spirit 
have marveled at your dedication. It is rare to find a church such as yours on earth. The Heavenly Father asked us, What can I give you? Then the Father asked Jesus, My son, what do you think I should do? Jesus replied, Father, do as you will. The Holy Spirit anointed us with the holy fire, oil, and heavenly gifts. The Father said, For Pastor's wife, Hong Jia Kang, I especially want to anoint her with the blazing fire of the Holy Spirit, an ability to heal the sick, and I want her to dance the spiritual dance with boldness. When Pastor's wife started spiritually dancing, Everyone watched in awe. Her face started to turn red as she danced under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. God abruptly pushed me into a place that seemed like I was underwater or something, as if my body and feet moved with a mind of their own. A little while later, I heard the Lord's voice say, I will baptize you with a blazing fire. I felt as if I had been thrown into oil and my body instantly felt like a fireball. Later, Jesus started talking about the churches in Korea. With an angry tone, he said, What good is it if a church is only big and hollow, with its cross lighting up? I chose the pastoral leaders to save the lost souls, but they lack prayer, and it's breaking my heart. Later, I was dancing the holy dance and praying in tongues when Jesus held my hand, saying, Bong Nyo, come with me to heaven. As soon as I held Jesus' hand, I was suddenly wearing a white garment, and I was flying with Jesus into the air. As I got higher, the earth became smaller and smaller. The universe was so beautiful. We flew for a while, and then we reached the galaxy. When we passed the galaxy, it became dark again, and I saw two roads. We went through the road on the right. So I asked, Lord, uh, well, where, where does that left road lead to? He told me that it led to hell. It seemed we were on the road for a while, when suddenly a light appeared that was so intense I could not open my eyes. Heaven was filled with stars. People on earth often say the word paradise, but what I saw cannot be described with earthly words. How can it be? How can this possibly be? I asked. Humans cannot fully imagine what heaven is like. Many angels greeted and welcomed me. And Jesus said, You've decided and committed yourself to diligently attending the church. So I want to show you your house in heaven. Follow me. I saw many angels constructing something. Jesus told me, this is your house. I looked, but there was no house. I, I only saw a deep foundation. And the angels were using gold to conduct their work. Jesus said, in a few days your house will be going up. Don't be discouraged, but pray diligently and live faithfully. You've worshiped the devil and you have led many people into delusion. But you made a determination to believe in me and diligently attend the church. Jesus said, I have a place I want to show you, so follow me. And he led me to another place. My beloved Bong Nyo, I will show you the treasure storehouse and house of the people responsible for evangelizing to you, your church pastor, Yong Dong Kim, and his wife, Hang Jia Kang. Watch carefully. The Earth's 1,000-story building is only comparable to a one-story building in heaven, and everything in heaven is indescribable with the limited human vocabulary. Before my eyes, there was an enormously large building, and the radiating light was so intense, I could not lift my head. This is Pastor Yong Dong Kim's house. Jesus lifted his right hand up and I could suddenly see clearly. Pastor's beautiful new house in heaven. And the Lord said, 
Now let's see Pastor Kim's treasure storehouse. The distance from the house to the storehouse was uh, roughly three to four bus stops in comparison. Pastor's treasure storehouse was heavily guarded with hundreds of angels, so we could not enter. When Jesus appeared, the guarding angels suspended their wings downward and stood upright and bowed before him. Every treasure storehouse in heaven required Jesus' permission to enter. The radiant color pouring out from the storehouse was an image to be marveled at. Wow, Pastor Kimmel, he'll be so happy, I said. Inside the treasure storehouse, there were countless angels busy with amassing all of Pastor's materials coming up from the earth. Pastor's treasures kept on accumulating, and I asked Jesus, why is Pastor Kim's house so big? And, and why has he so much treasure? The Lord answered me, Pastor Yong Dong Kim started his faithful work early on, and he has always prayed and served me diligently. Jesus said, that's all the time we have for today. So let's see more next time you're here. He brought me back to the church. And Jesus said one last thing before he left. When I died on the cross, many believed that I would not live again. And they stopped believing me, stopped going to church, and now are doing other worldly things. Day number seven, Jo Yun Kim's testimony. I was praying in tongues for about an hour when suddenly a bright light shone. Then Jesus, wearing a white garment, appeared before my eyes. Jesus had brown hair and was wearing a white, shimmering, uh, toga-like garment. He called my name, Jo Eun, my beloved Jo Eun, I love you. Jesus drew closer as he spoke to me. I was surprised and said, uh, uh, are you really Jesus? Wow, oh Jesus, I, I really love you. You, you're wonderful. I was filled with excitement because I, I didn't know what to do. Jesus sat in front of me saying that he loved me. I ecstatically said, Jesus, uh, I really love you. And he replied, yes, I love you very much as well. Jesus told me, pray diligently and I will reveal myself to you. I will take you to heaven and show you around. So pray diligently. And then he disappeared. When I did not see Jesus, I began to pray in tongues with all my might. Suddenly, in front of me, there was a strange object appeared. It was running towards me. Both corners of its eyes were slightly torn, and the right eye had an X-shaped patch on it. This devil was covered with scars. So I shouted, in the name of Jesus, depart from me. The devil disappeared. I continued praying when something with eyes narrower than a cat's eyes appeared before me. It had wings like a bat and uh, sharp teeth uh, protruding gruesomely out. It rushed towards me to scare me. But I defeated it in the name of Jesus. Then a somewhat familiar demon appeared, and I wondered, where had I seen this one before? I realized it was the character I saw from the computer game StarCraft. This female demon ran to me. She tried to look intimidating by staring me down, and unlike the other evil spirits who quickly fled when I mentioned the name of Jesus, this female demon did not go away so easily. Even after I repeatedly shouted, it did not budge. And I was getting really scared. I, I rushed to Pastor Kim's side next to the pulpit and continued praying. Pastor Kim, he took my hand and raised it up. And praying with me, then and only then did the devil leave. Day number eight, Pastor Yong Dong Kim's testimony. It had been about a week since we started our determination prayer rally. Our spiritual battles intensified and our physical trials continued daily. 
One by one, each of the prayer warriors' spiritual sight opened up and they were filled with the spirit. Demonic forces then made an aggressive, offensive movement. Many personal situations arose, testing our anger threshold. On the first day, one of my car's tires had a slash in it. The next day, the front tire had another big tear. I was so frustrated with the whole situation. And nevertheless, I did not complain to God, but instead I shouted, Hallelujah! with a thankful heart. The next day, a tow truck took my car away. This was really close to pushing me over the edge. But my wife and congregation members reminded me, Pastor, you have to persevere through this. Later, someone had broken the car's brake lights. And then the day after that, someone scraped the side of my car with a sharp object. <sighs> the church service progressed the way the Holy Spirit led. Until then, the title of the church bulletin read, The Holy Spirit-Filled Climactic Hour. But it was replaced with, A Real Holy Spirit-Led Service. The worship, prayer, sermon, and offering formalities were removed, and we relied on the guidance of the Holy Spirit to lead worship, prayer, the sermon, and proclamation. The sermon can run behind schedule, since there is no pressure to finish within a time frame. Each prayer warrior sees Jesus' presence during our all-night prayer vigils, so they do not feel tired, even though the service goes on until the next morning. We are always alert, and there is no time to let down our guard, since the devil attacks without ceasing. Jo Eun Kim's Testimony I was praying in tongues when Jesus approached me, saying, Jo Yoon, I love you. He continued, Jo Yoon, pray diligently, and I will take your hand and lead you to heaven. Pray without ceasing, I will show you heaven. Do you understand? Now later on that night, the devil appeared in groups. One appeared flapping its wings like a bat, with two small horns on its head, and eyes like a cat. The devil flew towards me with its mouth open wide, with sticky ooze, some slimy ooze from its mouth. Its eyes were bloodshot, and I shouted, In the name of Jesus, I command you, filthy and dirty devil, flee from me! With that, it disappeared. A little while later, a blue-faced devil approached me. I was scared and had goosebumps all over my body. I screamed out, In the name of Jesus, flee from me! But this devil did not budge. Instead, it continued to glare at me. I screamed out loud and was full of fear. But then Sister Beck, who was sitting beside me, joined in shouting, In the name of Jesus, flee from us! Only then did it flee. I resumed praying when an enormous red dragon started flying towards me. Its eyes were green, long, sharp horns protruded from its head, and there was smoke in its nostrils. It lunged towards me as if it were about to swallow me alive, but I did not budge. I stood my ground, praying diligently in tongues in the name of Jesus, and suddenly it fled. It was a most gratifying feeling. I did not realize the power and magnitude of Jesus' name before this experience. The next time, a hideous, terribly wicked, and skull-faced demon giggled in front of my face. <laughs> Once again, I prayed in tongues using the name of Jesus to chase away the demon. Later, as I was thinking about Jesus hanging on the cross, Jesus appeared, encouraging me, saying, Joey, just a bit more. Pray just a while longer. Day number nine, Hak Sung Lee's testimony. The devil's concentrated attacks began. The red dragon Jo Yoon told me about appeared before me. It was enormous and it scared me. It had green eyes and black smoke spewed out of its nostrils. Its teeth were sharp like horns. Its claws pointed out 
and the tail was frightfully long. Nevertheless, I prayed boldly, and it vanished. And then a little while later, a female devil appeared to me. Her mouth was full of teeth, uh, teeth like a wolf's. Also, I began hearing an army marching in combat boots behind me, and it was stomping louder and louder, and soon there were dark shadows that surrounded me. The devil's noise and the military boot stomps scared me, so I started crying, Lord, help me! P please, please help me! I was calling out to the Lord when Jesus appeared in a brilliant light. The evil spirits vanished as soon as Jesus appeared. Jesus held my hand, and I sang and danced with him. Later on, Jesus called to me, My dear Hexum, do you want to visit heaven? As soon as he took my hand, my body was dressed in a white gown, and I floated in the air, and we flew toward the heavenly angels who awaited us. I could not hold up my head, because the presence of such brilliance, it was so bright. Heaven can only be described as a place full of stars. I thought I was dreaming, but, but heaven was more real than the earthly world. All of heaven was covered with gold, and there was no place from which the light did not emanate. Many angels and saints moved about busily, and angels greeted me joyfully. I said, Jesus, I, I want to know if there's a house for me here. Then Jesus sent two angels to show me where my house was. Uh, my house was not big, but the walls were made of golden brick. I saw an enormous flower garden, and it was full of various different kind of flowers. I had a sudden urge to jump in and roll all around the garden, and I smelled the sweet aroma of the flowers. I was full of joy and jumped up and down like a little child. Yong Kyung Lee's testimony. I was praying in tongues when a devil approached me, and there was a stitched up uh, X-shaped scar on its right eye, and the left eye, it looked like a raccoon's black eye patch. It looked like a male devil, and I yelled out, in the name of Jesus, flee from me, and it was gone. Later, another demon, which had uh, bat's wings, uh, it approached me. What wrong did I ever do that you have to annoy me like this? It pleaded. Hey, I'll, I'll never come again if you let me go inside you and come out just once. I replied, you filthy devil in the name of Jesus, get out of my sight. And with that, it vanished. After that, I fought off three or four more different demons. And then suddenly... I sensed a sweet-smelling aroma around me. And Jesus came and called my name. My dear Yo Kyung, give me your hand. So I extended my hands, and Jesus held my hands with his warm and gentle hands. I said, Jesus, my shoulder is hurting badly. And as Jesus laid his hand upon my shoulders, the pain subsided. Jesus gave each of the prayer warriors a nickname. It was great fun. Jesus called me Speckle Face because I have many dots on my face. Joe Yoon's name, it's Sesame or Freckles because he's covered with freckles. But later, Jesus consoled me because of all the pain I went through seeing my family in hell. My dear Yong Kyung, you cried so much after meeting your grandmother in hell. The Lord reminded me, Yo Kyung, when I take you to visit hell, you must not lend your hand to anyone, even if it is your beloved grandmother. You must never hold anyone's hand in that place. Later, Jesus again took me to visit hell. This time, I saw my deceased father and my 26-year-old younger brother. He committed suicide by ingesting poison. They were both naked and their eyes met mine. My, my older sister, Bung Nyo, how, how did you come here? Th this is not a place for you. Big sis, pray to the Lord. Hurry and plead with him. Get me out of here. Help me get to heaven now. 
With his cry and plea, my brother was thrown into a pot of boiling liquid, and I could hear it boiling. Since I was a young child, my father despised me, and that hatred magnified over the years. My earthly father said, Bung Yo, when I was living, I did so many despicable things that I regret so much now. I guess that's why I'm here. I am sincerely sorry. I asked Jesus, Lord, why, why, why did my father come here? And he replied, Your father has sinned greatly. He did not believe in me, but he also gambled without missing a day. When your mother was pregnant with your sibling and had merely one month before the baby was to be born healthy and naturally, your father took that precious life in the womb by punching your mother in her stomach. The baby suffered trauma in the womb and died. Your father also forced you to bury a baby who was still alive up on a mountain. Don't you already know this? After committing such a wicked sin, he never confessed or asked for forgiveness. It is right that he belongs here in hell. Jesus' tone was full of anger. I saw another face I knew. It was my little sister's mother-in-law. And she earnestly requested that when I returned to earth, she wanted her daughter-in-law and her family to believe in Jesus Christ, to pray diligently, and to see hell so that they would all go to heaven. She said, I really didn't know there was a hell or how hot and miserable it is here. I once held the title of deacon at the church, but I never served at church. I had too many idols in the world and it corrupted me. That's why I'm here. I regret it so very much. Then she was thrown into hot liquid the same way. I was so scared and sad, I could not take it any longer. My face was covered with tears, and the burning odor made my breathing difficult. Jesus also continued shedding his tears. The Lord had an important lesson for me. You have only one chance at heaven, and that's while you are still physically alive. I couldn't do anything but just watch them suffer. Yo Kyung Lee's testimony. After praying until 7.30 a.m., I came home hoping to get some sleep when I felt a presence in the room. I opened my eyes, but I didn't see anything. When I closed my eyes, Jesus was sitting beside me. But a, a, a sudden fear came over me and, and my body was just covered with goosebumps. I prayed boldly in tongues Suddenly, the person I thought was Jesus transformed into a dark demon, and it had dark blue eyes. The demon rolled its eyes, and with its hands raised, it, it, it tried to recite the Lord's Prayer. Then it shouted, All demons arise! I was terrified. With a commanding shout, I said, You devil in the name of Jesus, flee from me! And the demon instantly vanished. Day 10, Jo Eun Kim's testimony. While I was intensely praying in tongues, a red dragon appeared before me. It suddenly dashed and leapt at me. The dragon had eyes of a menacing crocodile with thick and sharp claws, and he attempted to terrify me by thrusting his claws at me. Disgusting and repulsive smoke emitted from its nostrils. Satan, you, you hideous being, flee from me in the name of Jesus. I was shouting like a mad woman. The dragon then headed towards Brother Haksung. Haksung becomes startled. His praying in tongues became more intense and loud. He shouted as I did. Satan, flee from me in the name of Jesus. Soon the dragon approached me again. And this time it transformed into a black dragon. With a wicked laugh. The dragon began to speak. <laughs> do not pray. Why do you so effortlessly open your eyes when you pray? If that is the case, oh, open your eyes. Why must you close your eyes during prayer? Open your eyes this instant. 
Why are you praying so intensely today? It tried to break my concentration in prayers. I shouted again, Hideous Satan, flee from me in the name of Jesus! However, this dragon did not leave so easily. Therefore, I had to emphasize Jesus' name more emphatically. And with that shout of Jesus' name, the dragon once again turned to me with an evil, piercing eyes, ground its teeth, and fled. Soon, another spirit glared at me and began to advance towards me. I realized it was a famous female spirit seen in many Korean horror movies and on TV. Uh, I, I, I became frightened, b b but I knew if I expressed any fear, it would give her confidence to attack me. With all my strength, I attempted not to express any fear as I fought this ghost with my prayers. The purpose of this figure is to frighten people to death. Blood dripped down from the ends of her mouth, and her hair was tangled and unkept. She made an, an unholy sound, a, a, a hideous giggle. <laughs> With all my strength, I shouted, Flee from me in the name of Jesus! And it disappeared. Later on, the Lord Jesus appeared before me. However, this time, I sensed there was something wrong. I, I sensed uneasiness, and I, and I felt frightened when seeing the Lord. I remember my pastor telling me to be cautious, since the devil can appear as an angel of light. I was told that if I'm not able to discern, I should either pray in tongues or test the angel by stating scripture. I attempted to test this Jesus by praying in tongues. And the moment I prayed in tongues, what appeared as the Lord's face began to disfigure and, and turn black. The devil had come to me disguised as Jesus. The devil's eyes rolled in all directions and would not leave my presence as he tried to distract my prayers. Sister Bong Nyo Beck's Testimony Today, as I was praying in tongues, the Lord Jesus came to me. I cried, Lord, Lord. Jesus spoke and said, Stop crying. I came to take you to heaven. Come with me. There was sympathy in the Lord's face as he held my hand. Whenever I visit heaven, I am I'm overwhelmed at all the mysteries, which, which are eternal and unlimited. I'm amazed at all the wonderful sights. I, I feel that it could take forever to view and experience all of heaven. Jesus told me to go and observe the church in heaven. As soon as we arrived there, my jaw dropped when I looked at an enormously impressive building. I shouted, Wow! I was in a state of ecstasy. It was so large. It appeared as though it could reach the sky in heaven. Later, as we were touring heaven, Jesus said, Bong Nyo, let us go visit the highest peak of heaven. When we reached the top, I could see many different areas of heaven. I saw many angels and an enormous garden with many different types of flowers. It was impossible for me to count all the different kinds of plants and flowers I saw. I could see an endless ocean, clear as crystal, and there were many beautiful ships floating on the water. Later on, when I was back on earth, even though I had just visited heaven, I was again reminded of my parents and brother in hell. I cried for many hours, and I, I just didn't know what to do. Soon, a group of 15 angels appeared to me. The Lord commanded us to go to earth and comfort Sister Bonio Beck. This is why we are here, they said. They circled around me and began to minister to me with warm, comforting words. Soon, I was able to calm down and my tears were wiped away. Later, 
as I continued to pray, suddenly I saw heaven open and Father God was sitting on his heavenly throne. He spoke and told me to stop crying. The Holy Spirit came and whispered to me, I will give you and Sister Hung Ja Kung a gift of healing and the fire of the Holy Spirit. However, you must earnestly seek them. As Jesus was standing next to the Father, he said to me, Bong Nyo, when you become weary and weak during prayers, I shall anoint you with the power of the Holy Spirit. After a little time, Jesus started speaking in a harsh voice. Jesus stated that the churches and pastors are worshiping him in vain. They follow tradition and the works of men. Many of the services are short and void in message. The length in worship and praise time has become unacceptable. They are more concerned with when it will be over. The preaching time has been shortened. Jesus was expressing his distress. Generally, services are about one hour in length. However, many services have become less than one hour. They are in a hurry to finish. Jesus would like to manifest in the preacher's bodies. But the pastors preach in the flesh and not in the spirit. They are more concerned about time management than preaching in the spirit. With less worship and service time, many preachers are utilizing the free time for personal use, such as dining, taking trips with the congregation, and wasting time on other trivial matters. Some pastors are distracted and deluded by attractive sisters and give great attention to their beauty. Moreover, some pastors do not treat the congregation with equal respect. The wealthier members are given more time and respect than those without money. These type of pastors are not spending enough time in prayer for the glory of God, but they are praying trivially, which is frustrating and dismaying to our Lord. The messages are not led by the Holy Spirit. The messages are provided by the strength of the pastor's knowledge and their flesh. Messages not from the Spirit will result in short, vain preaching. Preachers elect not to be led by the Holy Spirit, but by their own congregation. Jesus desires to powerfully anoint and utilize pastors for God's glory. However, the preachers have, by their own will, given up seeking the Lord's anointing. Now their carnal minds rule over their spirit. Many preachers cannot feel God's heart and desires. God is deeply saddened. When expanding or building a church, some preachers do it for the sake of their own glory and their pride. In their hearts, the building is a monument to themselves. These type of pastors spend very little time in prayer and are preoccupied with the materialism of this world. As the Lord told me about these things, I saw the expression of grief on his face. Although many preachers can boast about their spectacular buildings, heaven considers it trivial. Heaven's way is higher than earth's way. What one perceives as important on earth may be incidental in heaven. Jesus told me, not all pastors are wicked. However, the disobedient ones must be disciplined. If they do not repent, I will throw them into hell. In hell they will be tormented. And in a short time I shall take you there where you will witness those who have gone before them. Later on that day, I needed help from the Lord to understand something. Some believers, who have been Christians for decades, told me that when a person dies, he or she enters either heaven or hell. They claim that a person could not visit heaven or hell while they were still alive. They said it was nonsense. They said my church had issues 
on doctrine and beliefs. They would make sarcastic remarks about our prayer meetings and ridicule the lengthy hours. They further claimed that Pastor Kim and the church might be a cult. So I prayed, please, please Lord, what if our church really is a cult? What will happen to my family? The Lord said, what is a cult? People are criticizing and judging one another because of their differences, denominations, and doctrines. They are committing sin. However, I am very pleased with your church. You and your church members pray without ceasing throughout the night. Those who have persecuted you and called you a cult will know that I live and I am the Lord. You have received the gift of healing the sick and are able to cast out demons. You also live by following the Holy Spirit. Jesus continued, People who judge and criticize one another will receive terrible judgment. Do not let them lead you astray. I am deeply moved by your prayers. Do not worry. I will protect you and your church. Although it is my wish to reveal myself to all my people and grant them spiritual gifts, they do not seek me. Many are not praying according to my will. I asked him, Jesus, Jesus, what will happen to our church? You are fortunate to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to receive the gift of tongues so soon. The holy fire will be felt and received by the congregation. During long services, Pastor Kim powerfully preaches through the strength of the Holy Spirit's anointing. Some might assume that we would doze off and sleep during long services. However, the assertive preaching, praising, singing, and fired up worship are all done with so much compassion that we are full of energy and can continue all night through the next day. One day, our pastor preached with such assertiveness that his face turned red. During the sermon, which was powerful and passionate, I saw a vision of God's glorious throne. Father God was pouring down anointing oil. It appeared that the Holy Spirit was anointing the pastor with fire. I could see Father God continuously pouring down fire and anointing oil onto the pastor. The preaching became very powerful and delightful, and I saw the Lord Jesus laughing with joy. The Lord told an angel to diligently record the events of the service. The angel acknowledged and obeyed. I asked Jesus about another worldwide church that had many branches even in Korea. Some say their numbers are great due to their history and tradition. Are, are they believers like us? I asked Jesus. Jesus answered, If they believe in me, of course they will be saved. But that church degrades the word of God by wedding it with the world. As we were discussing this particular church, in a vision I was shown a king of demons. This evil demon looked worried, nervous, and appeared apprehensive of his plan with that particular church. Jesus said, Many of God's people are very ignorant of the devil and the evil spirits. My people faithfully live their lives without giving much consideration to the enemy. However, the devil will attempt to hinder your work. Be of good courage. Later on, when I was praying beside the pastor, an enormous red dragon appeared. The beast entered through the front door. It, it seemed to be as high as the sky. The expression on the beast was pure anger, and it kept wiggling its nose. The dragon spoke, I am trying to enter your body. How dare you challenge me? I am the king of hell. All in hell obey me with fear. Who do you think you are? You're nobody. You have no right to reveal my identity. Ah, I know who you are. 
One of my subordinates has just informed me of you. I had told this subordinate to deceive and lead many people to hell. However, he came back unsuccessful. When I asked him why he had failed, he said, My king, you must see for yourself why it is so difficult. I thought I could easily lead people to suicide. However, the prayers of the Christians are very powerful. What are you stating? I scolded my subordinate. I had to verify the subordinate's claim. It was true. It was nearly impossible to fight the prayers of these Christians. Although the dragon frightened and scolded us, we were safe because Jesus protected us. The dragon shouted vulgar profanity and said, I have been hindered. Then Jesus replied to the beast, Where do you think you are? Do not be rude and violent. If you touch one person from the Lord's church, you will be punished and my father will strike you. The beast was distressed and he suddenly vanished. Jesus said, That dragon in hell attempts to deceive you as the king of evil spirits. This is the first manifestation of that particular beast. He had always sent his subordinates to the earth to do his bidding. Pray diligently and without ceasing. Always be cautious and do not worry because the triune God will always protect you. Pastor Kim's testimony. It was Tuesday and outside was a freezing 15 below zero wind chill. Despite the weather conditions, four of the members went outside to evangelize. But before they did this, they would diligently prepare themselves with prayer and the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord would anoint them with holy fire. The four discussed a game plan to evangelize more successfully and effectively. They knew a great reward awaited them for diligently doing the Lord's work. They all returned late and were filled with joy. Pastor, Pastor, we had never realized that evangelizing could be so fun and enjoyable, they said. Day number 11, Joe Eun Kim's testimony. As I was earnestly praying, a bright light appeared before me. In front of that light stood Jesus. Jo Eun, I love you. Pray without ceasing. Pray diligently. Pray with all your heart. Do not stop. I sensed warmness and was able to see Jesus more clearly. Then I knew why Jesus told me to raise my hands higher. I was able to see Jesus more vividly when I did. I told him, Wow, I can see you more clearly, Lord. I love it. Jesus, thank you. I was feeling so good, so I stopped praying for a moment to enjoy my jubilation. Just then, an evil spirit appeared. It was blacker than darkness. I drove it away in Jesus' name, and I continued to pray in tongues. Yo Kyung Lee's testimony. As I was praying in tongues, an evil spirit with long eyelashes showed up. It was crying, and it begged me to listen to what it had to say. It, it's so very cold. I'm, I'm so cold. Is there any way you can make me warm? Please, I'm so cold. I replied, you filthy evil spirit, in the name of Jesus, depart from me. Sister Bong Nyo Beck's testimony. Today, Jesus took me to heaven. One cannot possibly express the sight of heaven with human words. We were in front of the Father's throne. The Father's majesty and glory were so great, I could not lift up my head. I bowed before him. The essence of the Father is indescribable. 
His majesty is beyond great. I attempted to lift my head to get a glimpse of the Father, but the pure brightness of the light prevented me from seeing Him. Father God is light. A finite mind cannot comprehend or imagine His glory. The magnitude of Father God appeared as though He covers the height and depth of heaven. His throne appeared as though it covers the ends of heaven from east to west. There seemed to be a formation of clouds hovering over His throne. A luminous light brighter than the sun showered down. I felt like a speck of dust as I stood before God. Later, as I was leaving heaven, an angel escorted me back to the earth. But as we were going back to earth, a horde of evil spirits chased us. The evil spirits were very ugly and frightening. Although the angel escorting me flew very fast, the evil spirits were just as fast. One was a dragon, another was a snake, another had a frog's head, and another had the head of a human. It was laughing as it chased us. I said to the angel, uh, can, can we go any faster? The evil spirits were already ahead of us and blocking our way to the church. Other evil spirits were behind us and prepared to attack. The angel shouted, Lord, please come now. As soon as the angel shouted, the Lord appeared in front of us. And with a mighty and powerful voice, he rebuked the evil spirits. How dare you try to attack my child? Be gone now. Within a second, the evil spirits disappeared. Day number 12. Sister Bong Nyo Beck's testimony. I was praying in tongues, and 30 minutes into praying, I saw five angels flying towards me. I decided to test the angels to determine if they were angels and not evil spirits. I continued to pray in tongues. I saw friendly smiles on their faces, and the angels presented themselves as friends as I continued in my diligent prayer in tongues. I assumed that my diligent praying would confirm the angels as friends. However, within a short time, their white gowns turned black and their angelic wings vanished. As they moved, their bodies would squirm and twist. I continued to vigorously pray in tongues and they began to fall on the floor. Truly, the spiritual gift of praying in tongues is powerful and great. Soon they resembled monsters that I saw in the movies. There were several heinous looking creatures, so appalling. I cast them out one by one in the name of Jesus Christ. As I cast out the evil spirits, a Jesus figure came and said, Bongyo, I am your Lord, trust me. However, his voice was eerie and his behavior was bizarre. Whenever Jesus came to me in the past, it was gentle, quiet, and peaceful. But now I was agitated and fearful. I felt the hairs on my head began to rise. With confidence, I shouted, in the name of Jesus, depart from me. It transformed into a strange, hideous animal. It attacked me, but with several shouts, it fled. Then another spirit appeared, and it was very beautiful. I thought, how could such a woman look so beautiful? The evil spirit was more beautiful than any woman in the world. Slender, with a beautiful figure, wearing a two-piece business suit. She walked as natural as a model, and she gently approached me. She bowed to greet me and said, How long have you been attending the Lord's Church? 
I ignored the question and continued to pray in tongues. She knelt down next to me, and although she appeared very elegant, my body was covered with goosebumps. Soon, her face split in half, and she turned into an ugly, horrible nightmare. The evil spirit shouted, Oh, go ahead and pray. It won't be easy. I will not withdraw. The evil spirit would not leave, and I heard the Lord say, Bong Nyo, do not stop praying. Pray zealously. I will rebuke and hinder the evil spirit. Suddenly, the evil spirit flew up into the air and transformed back into a beautiful lady. This time, it was wearing a beautiful wedding gown. It looked gorgeous. The woman flew down to me, blinking her big, beautiful eyes. The Lord whispered into my ear and said, Continue to pray and observe how the beautiful woman will transform back into an ugly spirit. I continued to pray zealously as the Lord commanded. Soon it turned back into an ugly spirit, and with a rebuke, it fled. Later on, Jesus showed me a place in hell known as the Red Light District. I saw a huge mountain covered with bodies. The people's bodies were covered with small white bugs, and their hands were bound up. But the people did not make any effort to remove the bugs. These bugs would penetrate their skin, their nostrils, nose, and ears, and mouth. With the bugs eating away at their bodies, the people soon turned into ugly figures, and then skeletons. They were in unspeakable pain. I said, Lord, why are these people in such brutal torture? And Jesus said, The women in this place are those who sold their bodies. The men are the ones who committed adultery with these women. It was so hot, and I was in agony wanting to leave. Jo Eun Kim's testimony. Today there were numerous attacks from demons, evil spirits, and dragons. But by the power of Jesus, each one fled. Then came a pack of spirits that did not have bodies. In fact, they were strangely all shaped as an eye. They kept shouting, Do not pray! We're going to distract you! Over and over they repeated it. Being frightened, I shouted, In the name of Jesus, depart from me! But they were still present, and they began to make a weird noise. Soon the Lord returned and said, Joeyun, do not look or listen to anything except from me. He covered my ears with his hands and said, Joeyun, you can speak with me. The evil spirits scattered at his presence. Day number 13. Jo Eun Kim's testimony. Today, there was an all-out attack by evil spirits. While I was praying, I was transported to a dark place that I knew was hell. I noticed many evil spirits that were surrounding a large evil creature. And this, and this large creature, it seemed to be agitated and fretful. It screamed and paced in all directions, back and forth, as it appeared confused and restless. This large creature appeared to be the leader of the other evil spirits, which were countless in number. Those spirits were awaiting orders from the larger creature. After a command was given, the countless evil spirits flew into the air and appeared at our church. Their speed was instant, less than a second. All the evil spirits attacked the congregation, including Mina, the five-year-old. But when she shouted sternly in her prayer language, the evil spirit next to her fell back. The attack was all at once against those who were praying in tongues. The evil spirits all fell one by one. A demon shouted a command. Listen, oh you, attack Pastor Kim. 
If the leadership falls, the rest will easily fall. You idiots, what are you waiting for? Attack Pastor Kim with full force! Suddenly, a large amount of evil spirits appeared and they attacked Pastor Kim. But what happened next was very surprising. Many of these attacking evil spirits, they just fell down. The evil spirits were injured and defeated. They were all frightened from what had just happened so suddenly. But once again, the evil forces attempted to attack. But they were defeated in all directions. The attacks continued but the results ended up the same. They could not touch the pastor. When the evil spirits realized that their attacks were useless, they all became frightened and avoided him. They only hovered around him and would not dare to go closer to the pastor. As I looked at the pastor, he was not even aware of what had just happened. He was fervently praying in tongues on his knees with his hands raised high. As the evil spirits hovered around the pastor, he prayed in tongues with a thunderous voice. Then the frightened evil spirits were thrown against the wall and broke into pieces. They all cried out in terror. When I saw that the evil spirits were fleeing, I felt triumphant and laughed victoriously. Then I saw the devil shouting in anger. Pastor Kim, do not pray. Do you think we'll let you get away with this? I'll kill you, I swear it. Then it gnashed its teeth and shouted at the demons. You, you idiots, with all your strength, you can't even handle one pastor. Hurry, attack. Then the devil shouted, Oh, that pastor is such a headache! I think I'm going insane! Okay, just, just leave the pastor Kim alone! Let's attack the congregation! Hurry! The spirits began to attack the congregation. But when they attacked the congregation, they did not attack with full strength. They only attacked with a few evil spirits per person, and not with full force. The evil spirits spread out in all directions and this time decided to attack every person in the congregation. There were all kinds of evil spirits and they all came in different forms and shapes. It's impossible to describe all of them. However, no matter how fiercely they attacked, the evil spirits failed to succeed. The congregation's prayer in tongues provided the strength and power to repel the evil spirits. As they attacked, they also fell back. The king of the evil spirits shouted, People of the Lord's Church, stop praying! Why do you continue to pray? Evil spirits, what are you doing? Can anyone stop them? The evil spirits all ran about in pandemonium. It didn't matter how many evil spirits there were, because the prayers of the brave congregation defeated them all. Later that night, another evil spirit tried to attack me. It said, Stop praying. I will distract and disturb you, so you cannot pray. I will curse you with sickness. <laughs> it laughed wickedly, but that evil spirit was defeated using the name of Jesus. Even later that night, as I continued to pray in tongues, I was taken down to hell. I was in a place where there was some devil jabbing a long, sharp spear into rectangular shaped boxes. And with foul language it shouted, You think you're a pastor? What kind of life did you live? I am ecstatic that you're here with me. The evil spirit continued to jab the boxes as it cursed. <sighs> and loud, painful screams came from the boxes as blood flowed out. I noticed the tops of the boxes were covered with canvas, with a large cross portrayed on it. The boxes were lined up in an orderly fashion, and they stretched endlessly. 
I could not see where they ended. I realized that they were coffins. Evil spirits were jabbing their long, sharp spears into the holes unmercifully. I asked the Lord, Jesus, why are the coffins of former pastors here? Jesus replied, These pastors did not preach my gospel. They preached another gospel, and those who followed became depraved. This is their end result, a place in hell. Jesus said, Depraved pastors will be judged greater. In another part of hell, I saw other people in torment. They were burning in a, in a large frying pan, screaming, Hot! Oh, hell! The large pan was glowing red, and when the oil touched their bodies, their flesh would disintegrate, and only their bones would remain. They kept jumping around chaotically, and then, then their flesh would return, and the whole cycle would start again, endlessly. I asked Jesus what they had done, and Jesus said, When they were in the world, they committed adultery against their spouses. They committed their acts in secret, and for this sin they are in torment. Later, Jesus showed me a different place in hell, where there was a very large pit. It was full of people. Multitudes were being consumed by fire. The red-hot fire appeared as though it had a life of its own. People were running inside the pit, screaming from the intense heat. And Jesus explained, These are the people who believed in a false religion, or those who rejected the gospel. Day number 14. Jo Eun Kim's testimony. I was fervently praying, and after a little while, an evil spirit disguised as a young woman with a white dress appeared. She had blood dripping from her mouth. Don't pray. I'm going to defeat you. You filthy evil spirit. In the name of Jesus, depart from me. And she departed. Then a very angry red dragon approached me. And many other evil spirits began to appear. As I prayed more fervently, I sensed stronger evil spirits manifesting. But strangely, at the same time, I felt my spirit approaching closer to heaven. The evil spirits were attempting to block me from entering heaven by frightening me. So I zealously prayed in tongues with my eyes closed. I tried to cast them all out, but the red-faced dragon resisted. I needed to continually rebuke it until it finally departed. The Lord came, and he looked very impressed with me, a youngster like myself, casting out evil spirits. Jesus called me by my nickname and my real name, Joey Yoon, Freckles. Your faith has increased dramatically, so continue to pray zealously with your eyes closed. I concentrated as I prayed, and suddenly I felt darkness overwhelm me. A cool breeze started blowing against me. I saw a door open from a distance, and suddenly a bright light appeared. I almost opened my eyes as the piercing light became strong, but I realized I, I was not able to open my eyes. Fear began to overwhelm me, and then Jesus appeared. He began to explain, Joey Yoon, while you were praying in tongues, your spirit was drawing near to heaven with the escort of angels. However, the evil spirits appeared to frighten you so you would open your eyes. But I intervened and commanded the evil spirits to depart. It was I who prevented you from opening your eyes. Joey Yoon, I think you need to pray a little more. I do not think you will go to heaven today. Oh, I was greatly disappointed. Jesus then comforted me with encouraging words. Joey Yoon, do not worry. I promise that I will take you to heaven and show you around. Hak Sung Lee's testimony. Jesus visited me and he began to show me hell. In hell, I came to a place with a large evil creature 
sitting on a chair. Its posture and demeanor uh, suggested that it was a king of this domain. A large trap door was located on the floor in front of this creature. And, and there were people standing on top of the trap door. When the creature stomped his foot, the trap door would open, dropping the people into volcanic lava. As the people fell into the boiling lava, they instantly caught fire and screamed in pain. Oh, I asked Jesus about these people, and Jesus replied, These people were fortune tellers, the customers of fortune tellers, sorcerers, witches, and people who committed suicide. When the Lord spoke of suicide victims, my uncle, who committed suicide by overdosing on pills, came into sight. He, he was dragged to the trap door and made to stand. The creature lifted up its leg to stomp and release the trap door. I begged the Lord for mercy. Please, Jesus, my, my, my uncle is in danger of falling into the lava. Please help him. Lord, my uncle's always been nice to me. Uncle, come to my side quickly. With a sad expression, the Lord said, Hak Sung, it is too late. There is nothing that can be done. Soon the creature stomped his foot. And my uncle, along with others, fell into the lava. <sighs> Among the people in that domain of torment, those who did not know God, many were Buddhist monks, some were backslidden Christians, and there were some who attended church for reasons other than Jesus. In another place of hell, Jesus said to me, Hak Sung, watch closely. There were many people surrounded by large and small snakes. They were all mingled tightly together. The large snakes coiled around the heads of the people, while the small snakes coiled around the people's bodies. The small snakes would continuously strike and bite. The people hollered out in pain, and I asked the Lord, Lord, wha what kind of sin did these people commit? And Jesus replied, They never had true faith in me. They never believed in me with a true heart. Even when they claimed to believe in me, their works were not consistent. They were capricious. Their capricious behavior affected their church attendance. They were never truly born again. Most of them all died in accidents, and they were not able to repent completely. Hak Sung, even you have a capricious personality. However, your Christian walk is stable. In another part of hell, I, I noticed one woman crying out very loudly. This is unfair. I do not deserve this type of punishment. My life on earth was miserable. I could not bear it anymore. That's why I committed suicide. The pain in hell is more unbearable than life on earth. Why did you send me to hell? It's not fair. I had never heard about the realities of hell. It's not fair for me to be here. She repeated it over and over. And one of the evil creatures laughed and replied, I completely deceived you into committing suicide. You did not know the truth. You even attended church, but you never heard of heaven or hell. I didn't even want you to know about this place. And although you attended church, you still killed yourself. Therefore, it is fair for you to be here. I outsmarted you. I deceived you. I won your soul, and I'll show you many lessons for all eternity. The creature began to beat the woman mercilessly. Her screams and pleas for mercy would go unanswered. Jesus took me back to the church and I continued to pray in tongues. He told me, Hak Sung, your prayers that last from night until early in the morning are much more competent and powerful than your prayers during the day. Therefore, try to pray more at night rather than during the day. Then he told me to look closer at him, and I saw the Lord wearing a crown of thorns on his head, and I saw the holes in his hands and his feet there was blood flowing from each wound. 
I kept repenting and crying as I watched the Lord suffering. After I finished praying, the Lord took me to heaven, and there he wiped away my tears. I got to see heaven's ocean. Oh, it, it was crystal clear. Yo Kyung Lee's testimony. Usually, evil spirits harass me when I start my prayers. But today, the Lord met me. He not only appeared, but he took me to heaven. And Jesus said to me, You feel good today, don't you? I replied, Yes, Lord. I, I feel great because, because I didn't see any evil spirits today. In heaven, the Lord took me to a very high place and showed me the earth. The earth appeared very small from such a high distance. I observed the earth spinning, and I asked the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, I want to live in heaven. I don't want to go back to the earth. Jesus replied, It is not your time now. You first have to serve me and zealously do my work. At the appointed time, you will come here. The Lord and I spent quality time in heaven. We made jokes and laughed a lot. We had a good time and I enjoyed it very much. Later, the Lord and I returned to the church. Sister Bong Nyo Beck's testimony. I prayed, Lord, why haven't you kept your promise to financially bless us? You broke your promise. Look at us. When we pray, we're praying in the cold because we can't afford heat. When we pray, we shiver. We constantly have to rub our hands together to keep warm. I don't understand. Why haven't you blessed us? We have nothing to eat except rice and kimchi. The pastor's family doesn't have any money, and my family doesn't have any money. We're struggling. When we pray all night long, we're stiff and swollen from sitting in that position. Our bodies ache in pain and stiffness. We don't have strong physical bodies because of the lack of proper food. Why do you let us continue like that? Lord, I can't bear it anymore. I was babbling and complaining without first thinking. But the Lord was kindly listening and hearing every word. The Lord was truly patient with me. And with warm words, the Lord began to gently speak. I do not mind your complaints. We do not need to worry about anything. Then he started to show me hell. Let us move on. Now look at this scene, Jesus said. I then saw a large beast, as large as a mountain. It, it resembled an alligator or, or a dragon. And my mother was next to it. It would use its tongues to coil its victims and then chew and swallow each person. I wept and wept. Bong Nyo, when you cry, I feel your pain. When your heart grieves, my heart grieves as well. When you are sad, I am sad. If your mother were still alive, I could have helped you. However, it is too late. If you want to complain and be angry, you may do so. I will be here to listen to your hurt. I know you are distressed. I desire for you to vent it all out. Later on, I saw our pastor's father in hell. An evil creature was about to throw him into some type of large pot that had a dark, rotten liquor boiling inside. I asked the Lord, Why is he here? And Jesus replied, He sinned very much and was abusive to his wife. He loved to drink. Alcohol was his idol. His alcoholism affected his work, and he neglected his children. His children had a difficult life. As a result, he will taste and be tormented in this rotten liquor forever. The pastor's father began to shout, Oh, I've done so many terrible things. I wish my wife had accepted Jesus as her savior. She could then enter heaven. When I was on earth, I gambled and drank all day. I never took care of my family. 
I did not take care of their basic necessities. My wife labored all day to feed our children. I am responsible for a difficult life. The sins I had committed are being paid back. I deserve to be cursed. Please, when you go back to the world, tell my youngest son to continue to attend church. Tell him to be faithful to the Lord and believe. He also asked me to tell his sons not to attend church in vain. They should keep the Sundays holy, repent sincerely, and walk with the Lord faithfully as a Christian. He continued, I am in hell and tormented. Hell is the final end, an endless torment. It is hopeless. Please evangelize to your brothers, sisters, and relatives so that they may have a chance to go to heaven. Jesus and I continued to travel through hell. We came to a place where I noticed a great multitude of people filling the sky of hell. They were of many different ethnicities and all nailed on crosses. The crosses were wooden and they were crucified just as Jesus was. I asked Jesus what sin they had committed and he answered me in an angry tone. These are people who attended church regularly. They even took their Bibles to church, but they worshiped and prayed in vain. They were impostors. They were hypocrites. Outside the church, they were drunkards and smokers. They did not keep the Sabbath. After church services, they would also enjoy leisure activities such as mountain climbing and so forth. Some of these people were loan sharks. They would lend money and charge very high interest rates. They became wealthy charging high interest rates. Many families were not able to keep up with their interest rates and became bankrupt. Families were broken up due to financial stress. Their hearts and actions were worldly, even though their words claimed faith. If they would have walked in faith with all their heart and strength, they would have entered heaven. They could not be born again due to their unfaithfulness. They were not born again either with water or the Holy Spirit. They followed tradition rather than God. Their worldly activities were more important and took precedence over God. Their deeds did not reflect true faith. They served with half-hearted faith. Soon, all the people nailed to the crosses were covered with insects, big and small, gnawing away at their flesh. Oh, it was a torment of torments. They were also made to wear thorny stems of ivory around their necks. Jesus told me that this procedure will be repeated over and over for eternity. The Lord was very adamant and clear about his warning. He then said to me to look at the people who believed in vain. I was shaking uncontrollably from fear. The Lord gently spoke to me. Bong Nyo, you are frightened. It is enough for today. Let us go. Bong Nyo, you have witnessed your family in torment. It has been a great deal to handle. You have cried very much. I wish to comfort and cheer you up. When you reach heaven and enter the church, I want you to pray and watch the worship. God's church in heaven is gloriously shining with bright light. The light beams cover all of heaven's sky. It was truly awesome. The multitudes of angels and saints. Day number 15. Jo Eun Kim's testimony. While I was fervently praying, a vision appeared before me. It was a man watching TV in his home. As he was watching TV, a grotesque evil spirit came from the TV and entered his body. The man never realized the spiritual effect of watching TV. Uh, then, then my vision switched over to an internet cafe filled with people surfing the internet or playing games 24 hours a day. The place was packed with many gamers. There was one man who was giving all his attention to his game. He must have been playing for hours. His, his eyes were red and bloodshot. Suddenly, an evil spirit in the form of a skeleton came from the computer screen and entered the man's body. With the evil spirit in him, 
he became more addicted and played feverishly. After observing this, I decided to be more cautious with what I watch and do on the internet. Then I noticed an evil spirit in the shape of a half moon with an agitated voice that said, Let me go to the internet cafe. And in a vision, I saw this evil spirit heading towards the internet cafe. The evil spirit came to a man addicted to a game. It said, Since you are so consumed with the games, I will enter your body. It then entered the man's body. Many evil spirits of addiction harassed the people in the internet cafe. Even some saints fell to this trap. They spent less time in prayer and more time with computers. They were dedicated church folk who had fallen into the addiction of TV and internet. As a result, their church attendance and spiritual life were compromised. The evil spirits were responsible for enticing the people. And these people became blind. They did not realize that evil spirits were responsible for their actions and addictions. I also saw a vision of evil spirits coming out of TVs into victims' bodies. Later on that night, as I continued to pray, numerous evil spirits kept trying to fight me. One spirit appeared before me in the form of a lion. It was very frightening, and I began to shake. It said, I will take you down to the chambers of hell. I shouted, What are you talking about, you filthy evil spirit? In the name of Jesus, depart! It then departed. Then, an evil spirit in the form of a young woman in a white dress appeared. She had fangs like Dracula's, with blood drizzling down from her mouth. She was trying to distract me from praying, so I called on Jesus for help, and she departed with a bitter expression on her face. Hak Sung Lee's Testimony Today, several evil spirits attacked me. The first one looked like a bullfrog. It had an unpleasant appearance. I was able to cast it out in Jesus' name. And the second evil spirit had a grotesque appearance of a human face with one side severely burned. I called on Jesus, and the Lord appeared. As Jesus approached me, the evil spirit fled. But, but I, I, I noticed Jesus was bleeding. He stood in silence and bled in front of me. I, I could not imagine the amount of blood that the Lord was losing. The blood came from all sides of his head. It appeared endless. I sobbed profusely. The Lord laid his hands out towards me to show me his wrists. I saw the holes where the nails had pierced him and from which his blood was streaming out. The Lord said, Hak Sung, you did a good job of evangelizing today. You also do a good job in cleaning the church. He appeared very proud of my efforts and continued to compliment me. My Hak Sung, as you evangelized, you led and took care of the little brothers and sisters. The weather was very cold, but you overcame those obstacles. You did a good job. I am very proud of you. He then gave me a hug. Once Jesus left, four spirits attacked me all at once. One of them said, Do not pray! Stop! You can't pray! Another spirit moved rapidly side to side in an attempt to confuse and distract me. Well, I concentrated with all my strength not to lose focus, and I shouted with my heart. As a result, all the evil spirits fled. Later, Jesus took me to hell. And I was shown a place where multitudes of people were screaming and shouting in pain, inside an enormous heated black pot. Outside the pot, there were countless evil spirits walking and flying in all directions. And Jesus said, Hak Sung, do not be afraid. The numerous evil spirits cannot harm you as long as I am here to protect you. This is a place called the Torment of the Boiling Pot. It is a place for alcoholics and people addicted to smoking. As the people entered the boiling liquid, their flesh disintegrated. And strangely, 
there was fire inside the boiling liquid. After showing me this, oh, Jesus took me back to the church. Yo Kyung Lee's testimony. One by one, numerous evil spirits tried to distract me and harass me. I rebuked them all. And later, Jesus appeared wearing a bright and shining garment. Yo Kyung, let us go to heaven. As we arrived in heaven, the angels greeted us, and Jesus took me to a room filled with many different books. He wanted me to explore and read some of the enormous collection of books on many different subjects. They were all gold and elegantly stored on shelves. These testimonies are continued in book number two, The End.